This is PAG 4.1. I am recording myself doing it because you can't. So I have the student worksheet that you would be following here. We are investigating the effect of changing the substrate concentration on the rate of hydrogen peroxide breakdown by catalase. So our source of catalase is this potato and the substrate for catalase is hydrogen peroxide, which is in there. So because hydrogen peroxide causes eye irritation, I've got my safety goggles and my hair is up. Um, I have all of the equipment around me. Um, and the first thing we have to do is label the 250 centimetre cubed beakers. So we have... Um, so, I have to put 40 centimetres cubed of distilled water, which is currently in this giant measuring cylinder, um, into the 16 vol beaker and 160 centimetres cubed of 20 vol hydrogen peroxide. Okay, next we have to create a dilution series to give us 8, 4 and 2 vol hydrogen peroxide in the corresponding beakers. So the diagram, I'll hold it there for you for a second. The diagram says at the bottom that our eight vol, four vol and two vol beakers each need to have 100 centimeters cubed of distilled water in them. Now to do this serial dilution, we currently have 200 centimetres cubed of a 16 vol solution. So if I take 100 centimetres cubed of that 16 vol solution and mix it with 100 centimetres cubed of distilled water, then we will have 200 centimetres cubed in total of an 8 vol solution. So you've got half 16 vol and half distilled water which results in an 8 vol solution. We've halved the concentration because we've doubled the volume. So this is 100 centimetres cubed of our 16 vol solution going into our 8 vol beaker that already has 100 centimetres cubed of water in it. And next we need to pour 100 centimetres cubed of our 8 vol solution into our 4 vol beaker that has 100 centimetres cubed of distilled water. And last of all, we are going to pour 100 centimetres cubed of our 4 vol solution into our 2 vol beaker that has 100 centimetres cubed of distilled water in it. So that is all of our solutions in the dilution series. What we now have to do is our 20 vol beaker, which is just going to have the 20 vol hydrogen peroxide in it. And we need 100 centimeters cubed of that. Now we need to get five cylinders of potato using a cork borer. And then we need to make sure they're all the same length. So I have a cork borer and I have a ruler. I've got a little rod to get the cylinder of potato out. <laughs> now I need to just check they're all five centimetres long and carefully remove the skin from each of the edges. So you can see on each end there is still the potato skin. Set up the apparatus as shown in the diagram below. So here is the diagram, this one. All right, so the tub is filled to about here with water <clears throat> so that I'll be able to get the measuring cylinder completely submerged underneath. And we are starting with our two volume. <laughs> so I've filled up 
the measuring cylinder with water and now I lift it up this way round so that the end of the measuring cylinder hasn't come out of the water and then I can hook this end underneath like so. So any gas that comes through this tube will bubble up into the measuring cylinder here. So I have to place one of my potato cylinders into the conical flask. And now we have to pour 100 centimetres cubed of my two vol concentration. So we only need 100 centimetres cubed of this. And in the beaker, we've got 200 centimetres cubed. So once I pour this um, into the conical flask, we have to start the stopwatch and I'll be looking at the clock. And we have to record the volume of gas given off every 30 seconds for three minutes. And I need to record it in a raw data table. Looking at where the water is in our measuring cylinder at the moment, it is at three. So that is our starting point when we haven't yet added the hydrogen peroxide. And now I will add it. So the catalase in the potato is reacting with the hydrogen peroxide that we poured in, the hydrogen peroxide solution. So this is our lowest concentration of hydrogen peroxide. And that hydrogen peroxide is being broken down into water and into oxygen. So it's the oxygen that's bubbling through this tube and up into our measuring cylinder. Okay, done the first one. And we're going to work up the concentration. So we started with our two vol. So next is gonna be our four vol. This is our last one. It's really fizzy. The potato is actually moving around at the bottom. So there's so much oxygen. <laughs> the next instruction on the sheet is to um, exchange your data with other people so that you have three values for each of our hydrogen peroxide concentrations. So you'll be given some student data and then you'll be able to work through steps 15 to 17 yourselves and there are four extension questions to answer as well.